I've been in this country for seven years. I know how every country in the world hates Israel, right? But I think you Brits have taken it too far. Yeah, because I'm, you know, I'm still getting letters from the council addressed to the occupier, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, give me a break. I pay my council tax. And you, my friend, you pay for my benefits. No, not anymore. I, uh, I, I have a job. I, I used to, uh, my first job in the UK, I used to sell the Metro newspaper in the train station. Uh, yeah, I know it's free. Yeah, exactly. He bought some. Uh, he knows. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't have one free for you that night. So uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I know it's free, but you know what? The Americans, they don't know that. Uh, yeah. yeah, buy one, get one free. It's for a good cause. It's for finding a chain of Starbucks in Baghdad. Uh, I also joined the BNP by mistake. Yeah, I thought it was a bank. Uh, and I also joined uh, Scottish Widows. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a strip club. Right, uh... I went to boarding school, I know, very posh and very gay. Um, it's all cock and cricket at boarding school. Jam and semen. Um, but uh, if you're a guy and uh, you haven't been to boarding school, uh, let me describe to you what it's like. Essentially... Yeah. <laughs> Essentially what it is, is you sleeping in a room with 12 other guys while they masturbate every night for two-thirds of the year. Now at this point the room sounds and smells a lot like a pirate ship. <laughs> sort of a vague salty smell in the air and a sound of creaking wood. And uh, this sort of really shattered my innocence because I was only 13 at the time and the only time I'd ever touched my penis before this was to tuck it in between my legs to pretend to be a lady. <laughs> So this, this really shattered my innocence, I was sort of lying there like that, and at this point it's a bit close for comfort, but it's not particularly gay. But at the age of 13, what a couple of the guys had decided was, they clearly explored all the parameters of self-pleasure, masturbation. And so what they used to do is they used to get other guys in the room to describe to them a sex fantasy to whack off to. <laughs> Masturbating furiously to the sound of another man's voice. And George, more detail about the breast, please. <laughs> Um, George, describe the nipple area in somewhat more detail. But, no, George, talk about the feet or something. I wish to prolong the moment of ecstasy. <laughs> um, guys, this is not a bit gay. No, Tom, it's not gay if it's in the dark. Jesus. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the boarding school rule, by the way. Uh, not gay if it's in the dark. But, no, uh, yeah, the guy who led this section. <laughs> it's true. It's not gay if no one knows, and it's not gay if it's in the dark. Um, Well, first I'd like to give a big shout out to all my homies. <laughs> uh, recently at the youth hostel where I live, I moved into room nine, the room they call the sex room. It's a 14 bed co-ed dorm style room. The first night I was there, two young, very drunk lesbians came in and had sex for five hours. I got really pissed off. Nobody woke me up. In Amsterdam, a show like that would cost $300 American. Um, well, you may have noticed I have a slight shakiness. Uh, my doctor has diagnosed me as having chronic, undefined muscular tremors. Let me translate that from doctor talk into plain English. Chronic, undefined muscular tremors means, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you. <laughs> Um, these jokes are, are not good enough to memorize, so I need to take a look at them. <laughs> Don't really do jokes. I'm really more an artist. I like to deal with issues with art. Um, I've got a piece of art here. It's, it's about the Vietnam War and, and the death of over 300,000 Vietnamese civilians at the hands of the US military. The piece is called Cat on a Table. <laughs> it's, uh, it's part of a series, Cat on the Ceiling. <laughs> and uh, 
finally get on a spike. <laughs> so that was Vietnam. I'll be asking, where's the Vietnam in that, Gareth? It's a good point. This next one, this next one gets more to the root of the problem. It's about um, the damage that drugs cause to our society. It's called Cat on Crack. <laughs> Um, it's part of a series again. Cat on acid. <laughs> and uh, finally, cat on steroids. <laughs> like that's just another cat, but there's just a picture of me to give you an idea of scale. <laughs> that was drugs. Kind of got to the issue, but got a bit distracted by cats again. <laughs> Um, this, this last, no, this last series is really on the ball. This is about the occupation of Iraq by the Allied forces. This first piece is called Cat on a Wall. <laughs> you, you might think this is just another cat one, but if you look closely in the background, there's a picture of Tony Blair killing some Iraqi children. And he's also got his hands down his pants, because he's sick. So that's good, that's a bit of satire. Get into the heart of the issue there. Good. Um, the next one is called Cat on a Dead Iraqi. <laughs> so this one started well. I thought I'd draw a dead Iraqi. That's good. That's a, that's a striking image. Didn't really learn what to do with this bit. I thought I'd just draw a cat. <laughs> The only other um, kind of politician I believe in regards to drugs is uh, Sarah Palin. Booze. Boo. Boo. Boo for Sarah Palin, right? Sarah Palin actually said that when she was younger, she did smoke cannabis and she did inhale, right? Which I thought was interesting because she's such a fundamentalist Christian that you think the only people she'd want stoned are adulterers, homosexuals, and people who gather sticks on the Sabbath. <laughs> Uh, this next bit will offend you if you're Christian or pro-life or just generally have a sense of decency. <laughs> um, no, but Sarah, Palin, Sarah Palin has said that she's against abortion even in cases of rape and incest. How fucked up is that? How stupid do you have to be to think that that's a kind of proper like, viewpoint, right? But Sarah Palin has said that even if her daughter were the victim of those crimes, she would choose life. Yeah, thanks, Mum. <laughs> If she's already called that kid Bristol. <laughs> right, seriously, but you have to think about it from the fundamentalist Christian perspective, right? Because if everyone who are raped had an abortion, we'd never have got Jesus. <laughs> like, think about it. If you disagree with that, at the very least, you say God did not ask consent. <laughs> He thought just because of who he was, he could fuck anyone he wanted. Like, he's like the first century equivalent of a premiership football. 